Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Josh. I make room makeover and DIY videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a large canvas from scratch. I think this DIY is beginner friendly because there are no power tools involved. This is something I've never done before and I did this in a day. Everything that you'll need will be listed in the description box down below and also I'll be mentioning it throughout the video. This project was sort of a happy accident. I am in the middle of doing a living room makeover slash update and one of the things I really wanted was a large canvas to go over my couch and finding one was a bit difficult both because of the options out there um, based on like what size you need and also because of the price and for me price was really the biggest barrier I really couldn't find anything that wasn't hundreds and hundreds of dollars so I was really happy that I was able to make this for like 45 bucks so if you feel like this is something you might want to try out stick around or maybe you have a blank canvas and you really want to do something, I'm going to be showing you a really easy technique to make an interesting painting no matter what your experience level is. So we're going to be adding texture to our canvas and then just putting something really simple on top of it. I really hope you guys like this one. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them for me in the comments down below. So before getting into how to make this, I just wanted to kind of show you the space that I'm working with. This is the wall that I was envisioning to put that large canvas. This whole space is definitely a work in progress. Um, but before getting into everything, I just wanted to give you a good sense of how the space is looking before and then how it looks with the piece on the So here's a little before shot for us. And here's the after once I hung up the canvas. Keep in mind the space is still a work in progress and I may have to move the canvas a little bit down, a little bit off to the side as I put more artwork up and as the whole room kind of comes together. But I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek before getting into the build. So these are the main supplies that I needed. I picked up a large roll of canvas from my local art store. I used these one by twos, which were actually scrap from a project my brother was doing. So these were free for me. Then I used a staple gun, also borrowed from my brother. And I purchased this manual saw with cutting guides from Amazon. This is a super great tool, very user friendly and great for anyone who's not comfortable with power tools. So step one is to measure out your pieces. You're going to need two pieces of the same size for the height and two pieces of the same size for the width. Once you have your lines drawn, you're just going to cut straight using the 90 degree angle cut on your saw. And you're going to do this for all four pieces so that you have two pairs of two matching sizes. So this is gonna be how we're gonna make our frame. So once you have those, I turned them on their side and I made a 45 degree angled line. You can do this with any standard ruler and eyeball it, or if you have one, you can use a triangle or slanted ruler to make a more accurate line. So the next step is going to be to make your 45 degree angle cut. You're gonna be using the guide that comes along with your saw. For this part, be very careful. There are moments where your hands can be very close to the saw, so just take your time, go slow, and if you have protective equipment, definitely use it. You're gonna to have to do this to each side of each piece. I found that this clamp was very helpful in kind of holding everything together so that things didn't move a lot while you were making your cut. Once you do this to all four pieces, it is time to join them together. This is a 90 degree angle clamp. I was doing this project in my parents' garage and my brother has a lot of tools and gadgets and things, so I kind of saw this and thought it would make my job a bit easier. You can definitely do this without having this bracket. I think it'd be easier though if you use two people. So to join these pieces together, I use some wood glue and I use these small nails that are actually made for staple guns. So after repeating these steps for all sides, I had my basic frame. Whenever you're making a canvas, you need to provide some support for the frame. So generally you can have a couple horizontal pieces running down the center. My pieces weren't long enough for that. So I decided to do diagonal pieces in the corners. After making this video, I realized I could have probably done four of these, one for each corner. But in the moment, I did not feel I had enough wood. So I went for two longer pieces. Because these aren't gonna be showing, these do not have to be exact measurements. You can kind of just make your cuts, make your 45 degree angle ends for each piece of wood and slide it down until it fits into place. Again, we're gonna go with a nail that's compatible with our staple gun. If you have one, you can use a nail gun for this or you can manually hammer into the nails. So here's what I was left with. This was my frame. Considering this was my first time doing anything like this, I was pretty happy with it. 
So next up, I had to roll out my canvas, allowing some excess on each side. Then I was off to stapling. So I started with one side, making sure I pull tightly as I went. Once you have your first side done, which is sort of like an anchor, you want to pull really, really taut for the opposite side. You really want to stretch the canvas as much as it will go so that you have a smooth surface with the least amount of wrinkles possible. For the edges, you're going to put your gift wrapping skills to the test. You kind of have to bend this in the same way you would a present and just put it into place so that you have a nice folded edge because edges are going to be exposed. You want it to be really neat. We're doing this for both sides. Just really take your time with this and remember each step you go to really pull the canvas as tight as it will go. The stretch of the canvas will depend on the type of canvas you purchase. Then I just cut off my excess and here's what I was left with. So my sister-in-law is actually an artist and I was telling her about this project and she gave me a great tip. So as you can see, there are some sort of rough edges and it's not perfectly flat. So what I did was before painting was just went over this with a damp sponge and left it overnight to dry. Because canvas shrinks as it dries, that kind of helped things look more flat. So now it's time to add texture to our canvas. So we're gonna start with some joint compound and just place it down in no particular way, just making sure to get a lot of coverage throughout. My plan was to cover this whole thing in joint compound so that we have a nice texture to paint on top of. As I was going, I realized I was going to run out of joint compound. So one idea I had was to make a sort of unique pattern with it and maybe to paint on top of that. But in the end, I really wasn't into how this was looking. So I found I did have some leftover spackle. So I took that and laid it down to cover all of the empty spots, which you'll see in a second. Doing this, I think was my second happy accident because once everything dried and had time to cure, there was a slight color difference in this, both the spackle and the joint compound. One was more of a pure white and one was more off-white. So once I went to painting, there was a section that I wanted to leave white and I was happy that section of white had some color variation. So here's how we're looking after drying for a couple hours. So I'm pretty happy with the texture. I'm almost ready to paint. I'm just gonna give this a quick wipe down. Um, just to get kind of some of these clumps off because I know that there are definitely parts that are not fully adhered to the canvas. So after we do a little wipe down, get sort of the dust and the extra bits off, we can start painting. So here are some inspiration photos for you guys. I was really looking for things that had either straight lines or very simple shapes. Something that I thought that anyone could do without much painting experience, because remember the texture that we added on the bottom is really gonna be what brings interest to the piece. And this one right here, this was actually my inspiration photo that I used. I wanted to find something that had sort of two colors in it at least, and I felt like these shapes were simple enough for me to reproduce. So I just mixed up this nice tan color, something warm that really kind of fit the vibe of my apartment overall. And I went in and I made these sort of three rounded shapes, all coming out at different lengths. So like a half length, a short one, and a long one. And this was so simple to do. I just made sure that they were all at varying lengths and that they all had rounded edges. Otherwise, it's just a straight color block, almost like a coloring book, creating those lines on the outside and then just painting it all in. This is a trick I learned from another YouTuber named Tina. I forget her last name, but I'll link her down below. You can put your front facing camera and hold up any picture or painting at different heights. And then you can review the video and see what height that you like the piece at. So here is an up close look of how our textured minimal painting came out. This was a really fun project for me and I was kind of skeptical if this would work out, but I'm so happy that it did. Hope you guys like this one. Can't wait for my next DIY with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really wanna thank those of you who have subscribed, who 
would have liked to have commented. All of that stuff makes me really happy and kind of really makes me want to keep going with this. I've been having so much fun with YouTube. For those of you who have subscribed and kind of stuck around, you might have noticed that I've been posting a video every single Wednesday. This is my first video that's a little bit off schedule and that's really because I felt like I was putting a lot of pressure on myself. I felt like I was rushing a bit and I really kind of want to pause and make sure that everything that I put out for you guys is really great content. It's not rushed. Um, so I'm going to try to do a video every week. It might be pushed to every other week, um, but I really want to make sure everything that I'm putting out for you guys is well thought out, well filmed, and well put together. So I hope that's okay. Definitely subscribe down below and you can even click the bell to get an alert when I post my next video. I appreciate the love. I appreciate you watching. But for now, see you guys next time.